On December 1st, Tesla held an event to celebrate the delivery of their first production semi-truck. What did we learn and what didn't we learn but can speculate about? Let's roll. A little background first. Tesla announced the semi-truck way back in 2017 and said that deliveries would start at the end of 2019. So yeah, they are three years late, but a lot of weird stuff happened during that time. The Tesla Semi is a class eight all electric truck, but, and this is a big but, it's not the only all electric Semi. During this video, I'll compare it to the Freightliner E Cascada, which is part of Mercedes truck group, now separate from Mercedes Benz cars, and compare it to the Volvo VNR, which is Volvo trucks, not part of Volvo cars. <sighs> and I wasn't gonna mention them, but they seem to reply to every post from the Twitter CEO. Nikola Trucks also has an electric semi called the Trey Bev. If you're not familiar with them, go look up their founder, Trevor Milton, who I can now officially say is a fraud and not worried about getting sued. The name of the company is Nikola, as in Nikola Tesla. And somehow the men and women working at the company managed to survive a literal sharknado of scandal. And they put out a semi truck. So way to go. It had been previously leaked that the Tesla Semi will have a range of 500 miles. In a post on social media, the CEO claimed that the truck was loaded to 8,100 pounds. And at the event, they showed a video of the trip because after all, it's impossible to fake a video. I am not trying to deny they did this. Obviously they did. They crushed it. Compared to other electric semis out there, twice the range of the best Freightliner, 50% more range than the Nikola. Amazing, right? But how did they accomplish this? The Tesla website claims the Semi has an efficiency of less than two kilowatt hours of battery used per mile. In electric cars, we typically see miles per kilowatt hour. Anything above three miles per kilowatt hour is pretty efficient. But these big beasts, we flip the units because they are hauling a lot of weight. So let's say Tesla uses 1.9 kilowatt hours of battery per mile times 500 miles that calculates to a 950 kilowatt hour battery. Because we don't know the exact numbers, let's say the battery has between 900 and 1000 kilowatt hours. That's a really big battery. Compared to its competitors, it's easy to see how it wins on range. In early 2021, Tesla said they were in no hurry to release the semi because of battery capacity. One semi truck uses as many batteries as nine to 10 Model Xs. So Tesla must feel somewhat confident in their battery production. Now let's go back to that efficiency number. At the delivery event, they talked up how efficient the Tesla Semi is. If we take its competitors and divide their battery capacities by the range, it tells us an interesting story. The Freightliner is about as efficient as the Tesla, but it achieves this by lugging around a much smaller battery. The trend of competitive data is bigger battery equals more range, but less efficiency because it's hauling around a more battery weight. And yet Tesla seems to achieve excellent efficiency and a bigger battery. So that's pretty impressive, which leads me to speculate. Tesla would be silly not to offer a smaller standard range battery in the semi. Fleet owners are wizards of efficiency. They optimize everything, the route the truck takes, what time they leave, how much they carry, what order they make their stops, if a customer only needs their truck to go 200 miles every day, why would they buy a Tesla that has more than twice that range? It seems like it would be easy for Tesla to take out some battery. Most of their competitors offer different configurations. Tesla did not reveal exact specs for their powertrain, but they did claim it would be about three times more powerful than a traditional diesel engine. That means three times 400 to 550 horsepower. Compare that to its competitors? Yeah, it's a beast. The Tesla Semi has a tri-motor configuration where one motor operates consistently while the other two electric motors engage as needed for acceleration and going up hills. Many of its components are common with the Tesla Model S Plaid for cost efficiency. Dan Priestley, program manager for the Semi, explained how this helps with efficiency along with the advantages of regenerative braking in a commercial vehicle. However, the fact that two acceleration motors have to engage and disengage 
does introduce moving components in this heavy duty truck. An advantage of an electric vehicle is that they do not have as many moving parts. There is no transmission to shift gears that can fail. This setup in the Tesla Semi does introduce a moving mechanism like a clutch, so hopefully they've tested the crap out of it. If you ask me, the real headline of the Tesla Semi isn't the 500 mile range, it's a charging. Here's what we know. Tesla's current V3 supercharger puts out about 250 kilowatts to their current cars. Their V4 superchargers are expected to put out 350 kilowatts to their cars. The Tesla Semi truck will be capable of megawatt charging or close to a thousand kilowatts of charging. That's made possible by the truck using a 1000 volt architecture, more volts times amps equals more power. Current Tesla cars and the other electric semi trucks are based on a 400 volt architecture. Some newer EVs and the Nikola truck have an 800 volt architecture. Tesla made it official that they're going beyond that and said, quote, it will be used for the Cybertruck too. So I assume that will also get the new high voltage architecture. The chart shows that they can push more amps or current through the same area of conductor in a V4 cable. Tesla has improved how they liquid cool and monitor current going through their cables. Compared to other truck manufacturers using the CCS connector, Tesla superchargers have a cable that is more flexible and lighter, and they are looking to keep that advantage while still delivering more power. All this means very fast charging, and we have some specs to compare. Tesla claims it can put back in 70% of the battery capacity in only 30 minutes, much faster than its competitors, and keep in mind that it has a much bigger battery. That's a huge amount of energy going back in a short period of time. It leads me back to my earlier comment. Why not offer a smaller battery? If you can recharge that quick, just pull over and recharge. 500 miles of range, that's about eight hours of driving. Truck drivers need a break, don't they? Another thing, based on photos from 2017, Tesla will use a proprietary plug on the Semi. A more recent photo, courtesy of Tesla Rati, showed a different plug configuration with a Tesla logo, and it was said to be located at a Frito-Lay warehouse, which is the first customer for the Tesla Semi. They didn't show details, but it seemed clear that the Tesla megawatt charger won't use the current Tesla connector. They recently rebranded that connector as NACS for North American Charging Standard in an attempt to get other manufacturers on board. Other semi-truck manufacturers currently use the CCS plug or multiple plugs for faster charging. They have a plan to transition to the new Megawatt Charging Standard or MCS because engineers love acronyms. So just like their cars, it appears that Tesla Semi will use a different plug than everyone else. I'm not saying they're wrong, but it does create challenges when building out infrastructure. And let's go back to that comment. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, going to be used for Cybertruck too. Yeah. What does that mean? Will the Cybertruck have the current Tesla NACS plug plus a second plug for the mega charger? Will there be an adapter? I assume they don't want Tesla semis parked in existing V3 superchargers, nor would they fit with a trailer and they will have to build out dedicated chargers with larger parking spots and with more electrical capacity because one of these semi trucks is going to suck up a lot of energy. Another thing I found interesting is the cab. Based on the looks, there was speculation that this would be a sleeper cab, but they confirmed that it is a day cab. Because we don't have specs, I will speculate some more that by my eye, this truck looks to be longer than its competitors, probably to make room for the bigger battery. Rather than leave a gap between the cab and the trailer, they filled the sides with panels for aerodynamics. There's some storage back there too for tools and stuff. On the inside, it's super high tech. The driver sits in the middle flanked by two big displays with familiar Tesla user interface. At first, I thought there was only one seat and wondered where will the hitchhiker sit? But apparently there's a jump seat in the back, which seems dangerous because they can sneak up on you. Tesla showed some of the software enabled features to help make driving easier, but I found it interesting that they said nothing about full self driving. And personally, I'm glad Tesla has been making big, hairy, audacious promises about FSD, and it's proven to be more difficult than they thought. Undoubtedly, they are working to take more driving responsibilities away from the driver and someday 
get to a high level of autonomy, but they didn't need to cloud the water with promises of future releases. In summary, the Tesla Semi isn't the first all-electric truck, but it does have the most range and charges like a beast. It's probably way more expensive than its competitors because of the huge battery, so they may offer a standard range model for those that can live with less range. Now that this big rig with its big windshield wiper is out of the barn, could Cybertruck be next? Probably. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a like and subscribe to see other videos in your feed and my YouTube shorts. Oh, and one last thing, Large Marge sent me. <laughs> be sure and tell them Large Marge sent ya. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.